So what's up everybody, welcome back. Uh, happy to see the new faces in the crowd. This beautiful thing in the mail. Meet the Ace Deck NYX Z1. Now, very rarely will the hype live up to the expectation. Let me just go ahead and tell you that number one, this is the most beautiful packaging I've seen. See, it says take your ride to the next level. It's very nice packaging. Obviously it ships box in a box. All right, enough talking. Let's get it open, shall we? <clears throat> very nice packaging, very nicely formed. Um, there are a lot of other Chinese manufacturers that can definitely take lessons from how this board is being packed. So I gotta get this out of my way a little bit. Father loves his car more than life itself. A man with priorities so far out of whack doesn't deserve such a fine automobile. So yeah, man, this is what we're looking at. We're gonna start here at the battery, 21700 Molicel P42As, 21 amp hour, 1048 watt hours. 14S, 5P, the thing is a beast. Check that out, look at that. Beautiful CNC machine work throughout the entire board. And you guys can kind of get a feel for what I was talking about with the packaging. Now, this is beautiful, beautiful packaging. All right, enough talking. I'm excited in case you guys couldn't tell. If you're liking this and you're getting value out of it, hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Love to hear from you. So first off, we've got two sets of tubes and tires. One, two. The next thing we're gonna check out is the charger. Now the charger is a 100 to 240 volt, 50, 60 hertz, 3.5 amps. And the output is 58.8 volts, four amps. The um, Eastgate guys, Eastgate manufacturers, Acetec. You guys are close. I love this type of connector, but I really love Canon plugs. Put Canon plugs on. Canon plugs are amazing because you can just have a little tether and a thread on cap. It stays waterproof, dust proof. All right, so we have two of just about every type of bolt, nut, screw, etc. Never know when you need spares. We have a USB-C charging cable. And we have a very nice CNC machined 17 millimeter. And this is for the wheel nuts. All right. So this is the Hobby Wing remote. Now they are using a customized ESC, but at the, at the core, it is a Hobby Wing ESC. Now it is their version of the Hobby Wing. They've souped it up, they've made their changes to it, and there's nothing wrong with it. I really like the Hobby Wing ESC myself, and this one does tricks. So this is the same remote that's in the Ares um, board that they also make. So when you, when you power it up, right? One, two, three, four, five. Now you can change the speed unit between kilometers per hour, miles per hour, I'm going to leave it in kilometers per hour because that's what I'm more or less used to. Brake level, and it's set at 100%. Oh, there we go. So you gotta press it eight times. Eight times accesses the advanced menu. And don't worry, we're gonna be going more in depth a little bit later on. But I'm just gonna very briefly gloss over so you can do speed mode uh, motor run mode 
max speed, battery output maximum, battery cells, battery type, driver frequency, max brake, motor run detect, or direction, sorry, motor run direct, speed up line, brake line, mode reference. Um, oh, so you can actually tune individually for each of the, the speed modes. You've got your um, low economy, speed and speed plus. You can actually go in here and tune each of those. So if you're going a little faster and you want a little bit more brake in the S3, you tune that in. That is really neat. And you can apparently uh, tune your acceleration curves. Wow. <laughs> That's, 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 that's pretty, that's pretty freaking awesome. So that is pretty wild. This, this, this is, this is neat. I, I was not expecting this. Um, I've been told, and again, you know, you, you watch the videos and you hear about people talking about, um, you know, some of the more advanced features and stuff like that, that they've been offering. But until you see it for yourself, guys, I'm, I'm, yeah, this is awesome. You can. It's in zeros mostly. <gasps> zero one zero one one zero zero one zero one. What does it mean? It's just gibberish. This is awesome. You can limit your max speed, uh, battery out max, battery cells, battery type. Yeah, dude, there's like all kinds of stuff, and you just. You thumb up or you thumb down to move up or down in the menu. You can press the power button or the mode button to affect your changes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm tweaking out on this and I'm, I'm trying not to because I'm, but yeah. So every single speed mode, you have adjustments. Now I'm not gonna adjust anything right now. Uh, I'm gonna play with it first and then we're gonna see what needs to be adjusted and I'm gonna tailor it to myself. So you've got low mode reference, low mode current, low mode speed line, and low mode brake line. So I'm assuming that's how you can adjust the, your braking curves, your acceleration curves. Um, I am not gonna pretend to be an expert on any of that. If you tap the mode button, you can back right out. Like with any hobby wing, double tap forward, double tap reverse, double tap back to forward. ASTEC, if you guys are listening, I greatly prefer a manual switch. That's me. Uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. But every time you tap it, you've got low, economy, speed, and speed plus. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off just so I don't accidentally run it in the box or something crazy. I also wanted to give a little shout out to Thomas B-Boy Stretch. Um, you gave me some advice on which bindings to choose for this board, so thank you very much. I've got a set of the MBS F5 bindings on the way. More on that later. Next up, we've got this beautiful carbon fiber bull bar. I'm hoping that this comes out on the camera because this really is gorgeous, guys. This is, this is really well done. Now, <coughs> ASTEC informed me, and I want to make sure that you guys know, um, this is not like superior crash protection. This is a place to mount a light and maybe help you maneuver the board around a little bit because this thing is 21 kilos 46 46 pounds uh, so it's it's a very heavy board that being said um, i think it's a very well built board the next thing we find in the box are the shock blocks this is their version of the uh, matrix 2 shock block also of note there is a company called radium they make an adapter so that you can use the LaCroix Hyper Truck bushing the Matrix 2 types truck. That's kind of cool. And, and as this unboxing goes through, you guys are gonna see there's a lot of similarities between this and the LaCroix. And I think that's cool. So the next thing we're gonna find is this thing seems to come with every different power cable under the sun. And I think that is awesome because as somebody who has moved halfway across the world and back again. This, uh, I'm not sure if this is Australian or Japanese. I'm assuming that this is an Aussie plug. And then we've got the standard uh, two prong plug. And then we've got the good old fashioned Murica plug. Also worth noting, particularly with a battery pack this size, just as a word of caution and safety, always plug your charger into the power outlet or the mains or whatever you would like to call it, wherever you're from. But when you plug this thing into the wall, Plug this into the wall first, 
and then plug it in to the board. Just want to throw that out there. You don't want arcing, you don't want sparking, you don't want anything that is not supposed to happen to happen. Now, ASTEC, I would love to see a more rapid charger um, come out, but that's okay. Uh, this does take about five hours to charge from zero to full, but this thing is a huge battery and you should get just about 40 miles almost, um, somewhere between 30 and 40 miles of range. So that's a lot of range. If you're using this as a commuter board, um, this is not the most subway or public transit friendly. If you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're going to ride the board to and from, uh, great, go for it. But if you have to take it onto the subway or a bus or, you know, maybe even, I guess it'd be okay in a taxi, but just kind of bear that in mind if, if that's what you're planning to do with this board. However, I just want to throw this out there. If you're a big individual, this is a great board choice for you. You're met with another layer of foam. And now we're down to the bottom layer. Pull all of these out. So you've got a pretty cool carbon fiber wrench. I'm not exactly sure what that's for yet but we will find out. I do love these specialty tools uh, that come with this because these are very, very well made. And these are very, very tightly fitted. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? CNC machined, it's gorgeous. This is your gearbox adapter. Bam, bam, bam. So ASTEC, if you're watching, I hope you make these adapters to fit other wheels, solid aluminum. That is beautiful. And these are a two-piece wheel with the spacer in the center. So it's not too different from what you're already used to. They are 200 millimeter by 50 millimeters. These things are beastly. And this does look like it's the last thing in the box here. We find a 2.5, a three, and a four millimeter hex key. Those are reasonable quality. So I think it's really cool that they give you a pair of tubes and tires extra with this uh, purchase. Let's get that thing out of the way, shall we? Battery. This thing is glorious. Look at that. This is a beautifully CNC machine, ESC cover. These trucks are very similar to the LaCroix Hypertruck in appearance. These things are 7071 aluminum. Because it's similar, to the LaCroix. It doesn't mean that it is a copy of the LaCroix. These are in fact Matrix 2 pattern. All right, so check out the rear here. This is your gearbox. You can see how that's mounted. I'm trying not to move you around too fast, so I don't want none of that weird jello-y motion blurry stuff. These are 6890 motors and they're just, God, these things are ridiculous. That's all I gotta say. These two uh, screws here and here are actually how you adjust the trucks. These are channel trucks. Now, there are some of the MBS uh, Matrix 2 trucks that have a plastic adapter. There's some that have an aluminum adapter. There are all kinds of different varieties for all kinds of different people. These are aluminum and they're CNC and that's a beautiful thing. Do I know if it's forged from a billet or if this is cast and then machined? No, I don't, but I will get you an answer from a stack. Roger. This is your kingpin. This is where you actually increase or decrease the tightness and, and you can adjust your turning. So if you want to turn, if, if you want it to be more carvy, you're gonna set it here and I'll demonstrate it actually on the front here. But you see this metal tab? So you've got up to three millimeters of adjustment. So right now it's set for loose. So this will give you the closest to a carvy experience. And when you want to firm it up, you move this three millimeters up and it's going to slightly compress this shock. Now I'm going to put a link down in the description below because again, these are a matrix two style truck. Okay. Another little side note, these, and this, I think this is awesome. Even the axle nuts, are laser etched with the ace deck logo and i think that is dope as fuck so kudos ace deck this thing it really is ridiculous now so give you a little bit of a better shot of what i'm talking about so if i want to tighten this up so that it has a little bit less 
uh, turning radius or it's wobbly for example for me which you know it could be then you're just gonna adjust it <clears throat> you've got from one to three millimeters to additionally compress this um, bushing so you've got here right so the base of it right here is going to come three millimeters towards the top of the deck that's going to give you the maximum compression on the bushing okay shout out to uh, scott in australia when he's talking in his video about bringing the front in by 50 percent i believe that's what he's talking about if not and you do watch this video scott i would love to see you clarify your your um, adjustment I've been through the a stack manual. Unfortunately, that's one of the things that is simply um, not in the manual. These are the red, which are the stiffest. And I'm actually going to, uh, I'm gonna try what Scott did. And so he's got the rears as the red and the fronts as the white. We're gonna go into that more when I get to the board setup, uh, which will be a much longer video. All right, so just really quickly, I'm gonna read off of my notes and we're gonna go right through the specs. So this is a customized, exclusively designed ESC. That's the hobby wing. Uh, it is a customized hobby wing, but it is a hobby wing nevertheless. Uh, and it is rated for a maximum sustained current of 90 amps. Um, that's, that's a lot of giddy up. Battery capacity, 21 amp hours, 1,058 watt hours. It is rated for 50% hill climb. Charging time is five to six hours. That's from empty or flat, depending on where you're at in the world, till full charge. The motors are 6890 gear drive, 130 kVs. So for those of you who don't know, um, the kV, if you've got 190 kV, you're gonna get a higher top speed, but you're gonna get less torque. With 130 kV, you're gonna get more torque, but a little bit less top speed. Uh, and Again, real world, a big guy like myself, I'm not gonna notice it. I am uh, 115 kilos, so I'm a fat bastard. These are a theoretical maximum of 6,000 watts times two. Uh, I don't know why manufacturers continue to put that number on there, because honestly, I don't think you're ever gonna get there. But that's just my opinion. Does have regenerative braking, CNC engineered, 17.5 inch wide trucks, operating temperature, is negative 20 Celsius to 45 Celsius. So for you guys that are out there in UAE, you're good to go, even in the summer. Charger input, 110 to 240. So wherever you go in the world, you plug this damn thing in. Battery rated charge voltage of 51.8 volts. Molecel P42A, 21700, 14S5P. That is a big honking battery. For reference, my B1 Hercules had a 12S4P, and I literally never got to the end of that battery pretty much ever. Uh, you will quit, realistically, you will probably quit before the battery does. Then again, you know, there are some of you guys out there that are, that are going for the endurance, and so kudos to you. CNC aluminum hubs, eight inches, all-terrain tire, 200 millimeter by 50 millimeter. So there you go, that's an eight inch AT. Uh, and the bearings now this is an interesting one so for you guys that are like myself and you plan ahead for preventative maintenance they are a 12 millimeter by 22 by 8 millimeter bearing i'm going to do a little research and down on the board setup guide i'm going to um, give you guys a direct link to where you can purchase skf uh, bearings for later on you know down the road now here are the speed modes as a big guy it's gonna be a little bit different for me than it would be for you. So I'm about 250 pounds. I'm six foot four. I'm a big dude and I'm a big wind resistance when I ride. So, but I will do my very level best. And when I do the range test, I'm gonna be going up um, the side of the mountain. So that's gonna burn a lot of battery. Uh, 24.8 miles an hour in economy or 40 kilometers an hour. That's freaking fast. Speed mode, 31 miles an hour or 50 kilometers per hour. And in S plus or turbo mode, you have your theoretical maximum of 37 miles per hour and you have, or 60 kilometers per hour. Um, so now that we've got all of that out of the way, this thing is beautiful. It really is. Um, I, I felt like a kid at Christmas when I was ripping this thing out of the box last night. 
Um, I went through, I took the inventory, I made sure that everything was there. Um, when I go into my longer setup video, we're going to go into um, how I'm choosing to set up the suspension. And even as I'm doing the initial ride video, uh, I'm expecting and anticipating actually to have to stop and make some suspension adjustments. Um, always carry your tools, guys. Always come prepared. Always carry a air pump with you. Uh, maybe a spare tube or a tire. Carry the basic tools. Um, not quite sure what this is for yet. Uh, we're going to figure it out. It doesn't go around the axle nut. Oh, it, it does go around the wheel nut, but I don't know that I want to use... Ooh, okay. That's interesting. It would appear as though the nuts are Loctited. Oh, yes, they are. The nuts are Loctited from the factory. And that's cool because... Oh, good God. Yep. So expect that when, you, when it's your turn. Oh, and that's not a bad thing. But trying to get a, a look at the axle because I want to see if these are hollow or if they're solid. Um, because that was one of the reliability improvements on the Matrix 2 um, for like their... their top tier model was they actually used a hollow um, axle. Earlier boards that went out to the reviewers on uh, Scott Davies and Cami June's, you'll notice that this hardware is different. So on their boards, this is actually a, a threaded um, with a nut on the bottom of it. So I've noticed that they've taken um, some feedback that I don't know who provided them, but kudos because that was actually going to be one of my feedback points, um, but ASTEC has already got it. The only thing I'd like to see a little bit better is just some flush mount, um, or maybe even uh, countersunk heads. Just a, you know, just a, just a suggestion out there for ASTEC. Another um, initial bit of feedback that I have from doing the documentation, or going through the documentation, um, if there are torque specs, let me zoom you out a little bit. If there are torque specs, I would really love to get them. So ASTEC, please, if you can, publish some torque spec data, okay? As you can see, it's already got the holes for the bindings. I have gone ahead and I've, I'm going to put the bindings on it, but we are going to write it as it comes out of the box in this particular case, because I wanna see, um, you know, there are a lot of people that are interested in this type of board, but maybe they're not comfortable Alrighty, and the last thing we're going to talk about real quick is the deck, because I realized that I forgot that on the specs list. I apologize. Uh, I've worked a 10 hour day and then I've come home. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, so it is two ply bamboo, three ply maple, two ply carbon fiber, and two ply fiberglass. So this is a very stiff deck. Okay. So compared to other off road boards, this is actually a little short. I don't think that's a big deal. I'm a US size 13 foot. It's a 10 and a half inch uh, wide. I believe it's, no, oh, it's at least a 10 inch wide deck. So got plenty of room, kind of gets narrow in the center. That's to mount the battery box. And if you notice, there is a, an arch. So on an off road board, that upward arch actually allows flex. That is what gives you your shock absorption. Next, um, okay, I'm gonna have to make sure that there's good adhesion on the grip tape. I noticed there was a little bit of it here that come loose in a little spot here, <coughs> which is not a big deal, but just figured I'd throw that out there. Here is your charging port. You notice there is a red dot right there. And over here on the charger, you will also see a red dot. So when you're putting the charger in, you go red dot to red dot, and to get it out, you're gonna give it a little bit of a, about a quarter of a turn, and it's it'll come out. As you can see, it has locking lugs on it. Um, this board is ridiculously well thought out, and I dig that. I really do. In terms of production boards, this is the nicest production board I have ever seen. Um, B1 is one of my favorite band, brands. I have the Hercules. Absolutely love that thing. This, this is, this is next level. That's all I got to say. Um, everything about it down to even the anti-sync plates is very well thought out, very well done. I like the design of the board and we're going to talk real quick a little bit about the concave. So, it's flared at the sides, low in the center, which is how I like it. You've got plenty of room to maneuver your feet around, even though it looks a little bit compact. And in fact, it might actually be slightly cramped back here, but 
I don't think I'm going to have too many issues with it. Uh, I've seen some of the other uh, YouTube reviewers that also have uh, big feet, so if they can do it, I can do it, and I will give you the feedback on how uh, I like it, and we'll talk about how well uh, big people fit on it, because this thing definitely has the power to do that. Now the last thing we're going to talk about here is the gear drive. And this is what I think is one of the slickest things. So as you can see, it's got a series of holes running around it. And on the wheels, you've got these nipples. So these nipples pop into these holes. And that's how you transfer the power from the motor through the gearbox into the wheel. That's badass. These are 12 millimeter axles, so these will definitely take some beating and some jumping. Hopefully, if I can find a clear trail where I can legally ride this thing, uh, we're gonna attempt to go up Mount Haleakala. Stay tuned for that. Definitely more to follow. Um, this video has gone on a little bit longer than I intended, and for that, I apologize. Mm -hmm.